What is the ideal diet for humans? Coming up. If you want to control you eat, control your body, and control your life, then hit the subscribe button so you never miss a video. For years, I debated the question, what is the best diet? I read books, I read articles, I spent hours on forums, I watched YouTube videos, I spent way too much time trying to answer that one question. It all started when I was in my third year of college about 13 years ago, and I wanted to become super healthy, and I remember reading Superfoods by uh, Stephen Platt, who is this doctor out in San Diego, and he talked about these different superfoods like salmon and blueberries and broccoli, all good foods and all foods that I still eat. Uh, but I, it, it started this obsession. Uh, like, what is what is the ideal diet? Is it vegan? Is it keto? Um, is it low carb, high fat? It's kind of the same, but uh, high carb, uh, low carb. I mean, there's so many different varieties. And I read all these diet books. Some of them were high in starch. Others were uh, totally vegan. Some were really high in animal fats. And it really just wasted a lot of my time because all I needed to know were some basic principles. And that's what I'm going to share with you in this video. What are the basic principles? What are the basic components of an ideal diet? Now, I know a lot of you are going to disagree with this video because you have preconceived notions of what an ideal diet is, or maybe you follow your own diet and you've had success. Listen, do what works, but I'm just telling you what seems to work worldwide. Okay, my first point is healthy carbs at the bottom then a little bit of animal protein, and then fruits and vegetables for flavor, for texture, and for vitamins. I know some people would like to do the opposite where they eat a ton of fruits and vegetables. I find that's really inconvenient and it can be really expensive. You spend a lot of time preparing it and cutting it and packing it. I did that when I was in college. I used to pack um, all of these plastic containers and bags with fruit and fruits and vegetables. And I used to lug this cooler around the campus like an idiot because I thought I had to have nine or 10 servings of vegetables. Well, it took a lot of time. I had to buy the vegetables, cut them, slice them, pack them, unpack the plastic containers, wash them. It was really expensive and it just, it wasted a lot of my time. I don't think it really made me healthier. These days I can eat four or five servings of vegetables. Sometimes I can just eat one bag of baby carrots and that meets my daily requirement for the day. I think the base should be whole grains, rice, quinoa, um, potatoes that's a starch but not really a grain um whatever there's you know it's teff there's buckwheat there's oats you need some kind of principal starch starch has and the reason i say that is because when you look at cuisine worldwide every one of them has a starch at the base you go to mexico and they eat a lot of rice and a lot of tortillas you go to bolivia peru a lot of quinoa and a lot of sweet potatoes if you go to africa it's a lot of teff sorghum rice asia rice middle east wheat it's grains and starches that drive civilization without starches there is no civilization healthy starches are cheap they're palatable they're very versatile that's why a lot of uh, thanksgiving dishes and comfort foods have some sort of starch in it because it's really cheap and it's really versatile and it's really easy to combine starches with something else then you have a little bit of animal protein you need some animal protein for B12, zinc, magnesium. There's some stuff in animal foods that it's really hard to get in the plant kingdom. Okay, like B12. Where are you going to get B12 from plant foods? I guess you could do like nutritional yeast or something, but it's not nearly as good. But you don't want to eat too much. I think that's a big problem with keto is that you have people eating cheese and bacon and butter and lard, you know, way too much of it. And then they wonder why they're not losing weight. Not only that, but eating too much red meat isn't really healthy for you. I'm not saying you should cut out red meat altogether. This isn't the 1980s. Um, but a lot of these meats, a lot of these processed meats, increase your risk for certain cancers, including rectal cancer. And trust me, you don't want rectal cancer. And then you have fruits and vegetables at the top because they don't have a lot of calories, but they have some micronutrients that's really hard to get in grains and meat. And they're really good for decoration. They taste good. Um, and make it for some really good snacks. Okay, the next component of a healthy diet is that it's not that expensive. I remember spending at one point $150 to $200 a week on food. It was crazy. I didn't need to eat that much. I could have I could have eaten healthily for $50 a week, but I was buying all these special foods and going to the you know specialty grocery store and going to the specialty section and ordering stuff online and eating $3 energy bars when I really could have just had a bag of nuts and I would have been just as healthy. Even if you're only making $15 an hour, which is not that much, you can still eat a really healthy diet. It shouldn't be that expensive. 
The next component is it's consistent. You're not always changing your diet. You're not cereal dieting. You're not diet hopping, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think the worst thing you can do is go from one diet to another without any kind of consistency. A lot of times what people do is they start one diet. It, doesn't, it works for a little bit and then they stop getting results and then they go to another diet and then they get results and then they stop getting results and they keep changing it. Quit doing that. Quit starting and stopping. It's killing your momentum. And the one thing you don't want to do when you're reaching any goal, whether it's a weight loss goal or a business goal, or whatever, is kill your momentum because it's really hard to get momentum back. The next component is it doesn't require too much prep time or a lot of work. I kind of mentioned this. Remember, I was walking around my college campus with this huge cooler um, and it was just a huge waste of time. I didn't need to do that because I was spending an hour a day preparing all my meals. You really shouldn't be doing that. I mean, an hour a day, that's seven hours a week probably better things you should be doing. If you spend all your time preparing it and then cleaning it and then repeating the process over and over, you're probably just wasting your time. You're not making yourself any healthy. If preparing all your food is taking an hour a day, you're spending way too much time doing it. I'm not saying that you should just go eat fast food and have takeout. Um, that's not really healthy either. You wanna spend some time preparing your meals, but you need to be efficient too. I mean, you have a busy life. You have things to do, you have obligations, you have friends, I hope. <laughs> um, you have a job, you're losing seven or eight hours a night to sleep. You have TV shows that you need to watch, YouTube videos like this one that you need to watch. You really wanna be spending that much time preparing your meals. The next component of a healthy diet is it doesn't require really complex ingredients. And here's what I mean. I remember when I was trying to be really healthy and I wasn't, I was spending all this money on these really special products. I would see them in advertisements or I'd see them at the store and then I would start buying them. And the next thing you know, I'm spending 150 to 200 dollars a week just for one person. And I was only eating like 2,500, 3,000 calories a day. It wasn't a crazy amount of food. But a good diet shouldn't require ingredients that you have to order online or that you can only find at the upscale grocery store. I'm not saying you shouldn't go to upscale grocery stores. I like my Whole Foods. It's good. It has some things that you can't find anywhere else. It's a good shopping experience. But a good diet, you should be able to find everything you need at a Kroger or a Publix or an Albertsons, or a, a Ralph's, or, or a Giant. I mean, it depends on what part of the country you're in. But you should be able to walk into any grocery store and find the principal ingredients of your diet. If you have to go to the most expensive grocery store just to find it, your diet is probably too complicated, and it's probably too expensive. The next component of an ideal diet is that it's flexible. Uh, you shouldn't have a lot of too many rules. It shouldn't be too regimented. You should be able to go to any restaurant, even a sports bar and be able to find something decent. Okay, sports bar, maybe not. But you should be able to go to just about any restaurant and find something that is compatible with your diet. I remember for a long time, I couldn't find anything because it was so specialized and so specific that I couldn't find anything on the menu that I wanted. So I would end up ordering two or three sides because those are usually where you find the vegetables and you know the rice and whatever. Um, and I would just have like three side dishes for $15. It wasn't really a meal and it wasn't that good. Now I'm a lot more flexible. That's the key, flexible. And I can go to any restaurant and find something that I like. I can even go to a fast food restaurant and find something that's halfway decent. Now I know the quality of the food at fast food restaurants isn't that great, but remember, you wanna follow your principles as best as you can. And sometimes you have to make some trade-offs. Follow the basic principles that I teach, especially in videos like this, and you'll be fine. You can go to a stadium, a ballpark, a barbecue, or any restaurant and still adhere to your diet. The next characteristic of an ideal diet is that it's not very processed. I'm not saying you should never eat processed food. Processed food is actually good in some cases. It's convenient, it keeps in various temperatures, you don't have to prepare it, you can open it and eat it. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of time preparing it. Definitely has its advantages, but you don't wanna to rely too much on that. If you're on the go all day and you don't have access to refrigeration or a cooler, um, sometimes it just makes sense to pack a, a bag of granola or some cereal or just an energy bar and rely on that. Remember, at the end of the day, your diet should supply you a sufficient number of calories to let you do the things that you want to do. Without calories, it's really hard to do stuff. I should add this as another characteristic of an ideal diet. It actually gives you enough calories to do the things that you want to do. What is the point of eating after all? It's to give us the energy to live the lives that we want to do. It's fuel in the gas tank. Without it, 
you don't really do anything or you don't enjoy it or you're just hangry all the time. Now back to the processed food. Now back to the processed food. You shouldn't over rely on processed food. I remember when I did home visits, I was eating nothing but processed food. It was energy bars. It was cereal, sometimes candy bars. It was diet soda. It wasn't a lot of healthy stuff. I was eating a lot of stuff that was just convenient and tasty, but they weren't the best options. Even if you don't have access to a stove or refrigerator, uh, at least once a day, you should eat something that requires some preparation, even if it's only one meal a day. Do the best you can. You're not gonna be able to eat a perfect diet every day, all the time, unless you just wanna camp in your kitchen and never leave the kitchen, um, which I don't recommend you do, then you're just gonna have to compromise at some point. Remember, adhere to the principles as best as you can. This channel is for real people living in a real world. What are those groups? Fruits and vegetables, nuts, whole grains and starches, and then animal protein like meat and dairy, seafood. You don't wanna cut out anything. You, should, you shouldn't eat foods that you either don't like or that you have an allergy to. You know, if you have celiacs, you shouldn't eat wheat. I get it. If you have allergic reactions to shellfish, don't eat shellfish. But really, you should include everything that you like. Fruits and vegetables, they have vitamins and minerals that you really need. Meat and dairy, they have B12, calcium, protein, heme iron. You need all of that stuff. Nuts, same as fruits and vegetables. They have micronutrients that are really hard to get somewhere else. Whole grains and starches, they're cheap. They give you a lot of calories. They're compatible with everything else and they form a solid base for every meal. I don't like diets that eliminate entire food groups. They're really not healthy and you end up compromising something. People who go on paleo, they end up missing out on a lot of B vitamins. Vegans, they don't get a lot of omega-3 acids and they don't get a lot of B12. Include every food group in your diet and you can't go wrong. If I could summarize this video, it's this. Get enough calories, eat from every food group, don't eat overly processed foods and don't spend too much time in the kitchen or a lot of money. I hope you found this video educational and entertaining. Which of these points is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Also let me know what you think an ideal diet is. This video would not be possible without Focus Me. Focus Me is an app that keeps me focused and eliminates distractions. Without Focus Me, it would be really hard to make this video. Type in the promo code that you see on the screen and get 15% off your first purchase. I also want to thank Orit and Jewel at Esatino Artists because they designed the thumbnail for this video. If you need help with YouTube SEO, graphic design, Etsy, fulfillment by Amazon, then hit up Arit and Jewel, there is a link below. And I also want to invite you to my free seven day challenge, Stop Overeating in Seven Days. In this challenge, I'll show you how to stop overeating in as little as one week. So if you have fitness goals or you just want to eat less, eat right, and get fit, then check out the challenge. It's absolutely free. And if you want to speak with me directly, there is a link below. And don't forget to check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.